Well, look what we have here, then. I think we've just been blessed. Uh-oh. Logan's men. This can't be good. Didn't we spend all morning asking about a woman by this very description, and everyone said they hadn't seen her? It seems we were lied to. Gentlemen, surely there's no need for trouble. These are no doubt simply more poor souls seeking refuge. They're more than that. Now stay out of our way, sister. You protect these traitors, you'll get the same as them. You don't need my protection. But these men will blindly follow their master's command, even unto death. I am not the blind one. I served at Ostagar, where the turn saved us from the Grey Warden's treachery. I serve him gladly. Enough talk. Take the Warden into custody. Kill this sister and anyone else that gets in your way. Right. Let's make this quick. All right. You've won. We surrender. Good. They've learned their lesson and we can all stop fighting now. I was there! The turn pulled us out of a trap. The wardens led the king to his death. The turn could do nothing! Please wait! They have surrendered. They were no match for you. Let them be! But they failed, and I do not wish death on anyone. Yes, thank you, thank you! I apologize for interfering. But I couldn't just sit by and not help. Are we getting a move on? Good plan. Where will we be heading then? Oh, am I getting ahead of myself? So sorry. Let me introduce myself. I am Liliana, one of the lay sisters of the Chantry here in Lothring. Oh, I was. Those men said you're a Grey Warden. You will be battling the Darkspawn, yes? That is what Grey Wardens do. I know after what happened, you will need all the help you can get. That's why I'm coming along. But... Oh, I see. Of course. Shall we move on, my completely ordinary and unremarkable friend? Oh, I thought you might say that. But you see, the Maker wants me to join you. I... I know that sounds absolutely insane. But it's true. I had a dream. A vision. More crazy? I thought we were all full up. Look at the people here. They are lost in their despair. And this darkness, this chaos, will spread. The Maker doesn't want this. What you do, what you are meant to do, is the Maker's work. Let me help. I can fight. I can do more than fight. As I said, I was not always a lay sister. I put aside that life when I came here. But now, if it is the Maker's will, I will take it up again. Gladly. Please let me help you. Then what? What happens when the hold comes? It will follow anywhere we flee, until all we know is destroyed. But I... I will go, for now. It's not important that you believe what I say, only that you serve the Maker in the end. Think about it, please. That is all I ask. Oh, hello again. So will you let me help you? Will you let me come? I helped you in the inn, remember? I'll be honest, when I heard about the Darkspawn, I felt something urging me to leave my sheltered life in the cloister and do something, anything. And then the vision. It cannot be coincidence that you are brought here so soon after I was called by the Maker. Her plea seems wholehearted. And even though she seems a little strange, she does have skill. I vote to let her come along.
dress, but she seems more, ooh, pretty colours, than, <laughs> I'm Princess Stabity, stab, kill, kill. Thank you. I won't let you down, I promise. Yes? Well, here I am. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. I have had dreams. This was... different somehow. When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw, but there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. In my dream I fell, or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the Blight devours everything? That is why you are a Grey Warden. Come, there's a Blight to stop. Yes? Well, here I am. Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. Yes? Well, here I am. What is meant by someone like me? And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, there were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? <laughs> you would abandon your Grey Warden duties to seduce an initiate into forgetting Chantry and Maker? Oh, I feel so special. Thank you for picking me last. My fruit? I... Oh, I can't believe I'm having this conversation. <clears throat> but no, I did not take vows. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. We affirm our belief in the Maker, in Andraste and the Chant, but other than that, there are no vows taken. I was a traveling minstrel in Orlais. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. I... Have I ever told you I really like the way you wear your hair? It's very nice, and it suits you. Simple. Not like the elaborate hairstyles we wore in Orlais. They involved flowers, ribbons, jewels. One year, feathers were all the rage, and Lady Elise decided she needed to outdo everyone else, and actually wore live sunbirds in her voluminous hair. 
The chirping was quite charming for a while, but you must realize, terrified little birdies often have loose bowels. Yes, you can imagine what she looked like by the end of the evening. But I was trying to say something nice to you, wasn't I? Oh, forgive me. My mind wanders so. It's just that I... I feel so comfortable talking to you. Like I could say anything and you wouldn't judge me. You see? You play along with me. Not many will do that. I haven't felt this close to anyone in a long time. I really enjoy your company. And what would you do if I said I do? Very much so, in fact. Huh? <laughs> you must do that then. Perhaps later when I'm not prepared for it. Surprise me. Come then, let's get going. If I recall correctly, you have some important earth-shattering business to attend to. Yes? What's on your mind? I miss Val Royale. Unlike other cities where the people are the lifeblood and the character, Val Royale was her own person, and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Val Royale, streaming from the many windows, quiet refrains and triumphant choruses, and always floating above that all, the chant, coming from the Grand Cathedral. It was magnificent. Oh, it would take me a day or two to talk about the many splendors of Orlais, her golden fields, her lush meadows. Of course, there are good things and bad things about Orlais, like anywhere else. Sometimes I miss it dearly, and sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orlais. I left behind much, leaving Orlais, but there is more to life than dresses and furs. It is sad that many have lost sight of this. Orlais is very fashionable, almost ridiculously so. <gasps> but the shoes! Living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. When I left Orlais, the fashion was shoes with delicate tapered heels and embellishments in the front. A ribbon, perhaps, or embroidery. In soft colors, of course, it was spring. <laughs> Never mind. I just have a weakness for pretty shoes. It is so frivolous of me, I know. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day, but we have things to do, don't we? Why did you hear this? And did you not think that this could be historical fact and no longer true? <laughs> not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers, but some of them are... are what we call bards. Many use the two words, minstrel and bard, interchangeably, but to do so in Orlais would cause misunderstanding. Bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. The Empress must have her own bards at her disposal, I suppose, but many are more self-serving. In Orlais, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence and the favor of the Empress. But they could not do this openly because it is impolite, and in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. I have revealed too much, it seems, but it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. My skills served me well, but the day finally came when I decided to just put them aside. I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry, and when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to say the Maker brought me here. I lied to you, you know, about why I left Orlais.
I didn't feel like talking about it then. What happened to me? Maybe it will affect us, maybe not, but you should know. I came to Ferelden and the Chantry because I was being hunted in Orle. I was framed, betrayed by someone I thought I knew and could trust. Marjolaine. She was my mentor and friend. She taught me the bardic arts, how to enchant with words and song, to carry myself like a highborn lady, to blend in as a servant. The skills I learned, I used to serve her, my bardmaster, because I loved her and because I enjoyed what I did. She claimed to have retired. She married a noble and inherited his wealth when he died. To many she was just a rich widow. I thought I knew her. My devotion to her blinded me to her less than noble attributes. You can say it was my fault. There was a man I was sent to kill. I was to bring Marjolaine everything he carried. I don't know who this man was. She gave me a name and a description, and I hunted him down. I found documents on his body, sealed documents. It turns out that they were. My curiosity got the better of me. Something told me that I needed to know what was in those letters. Marjolaine had been selling all kinds of information about Orle to other countries, Nevara and Antiva among others. It was treason. My life as Bard taught me that my loyalties should be kept fluid. My concern was not that she was a traitor, but that her life would be in danger if she was caught. Orle has been at war with so many countries, it takes a harsh view of such things, as I later discovered. To Marjolaine. No one else. I resealed them and gave them to her, as she had instructed. I should have left well alone, but I didn't. I had to tell Marjolaine I feared for her life. She brushed aside my concern. She admitted her guilt, but said it was in the past. That is why the documents had to be destroyed, she said. I believed her. I kept believing up till the moment they showed me the documents, altered by her hand to make me look the traitor. The Orlesian guards, they captured me, did terrible things to make me confess and reveal my conspirators. It was a traitor's punishment I endured, and at the end of it, all that awaited me was eternity in an unmarked grave. The skills Marjolaine taught me were good for something, at least. I broke free when I saw the opportunity. I did not seek Marjolaine out. If she thought I was coming for her, she would have me caught again. I was tempted to confront her. I was furious, betrayed. But what could I do against her? And so I fled to Ferelden, to the Chantry and the Maker. Ferelden protected my person, and the Maker saved my soul. And that is the reason I am here. The real reason. No more lies between us, at least in this. It feels good to have this off my chest. Thank you for listening and understanding. Blessed art thou who exist in the sight of the Maker. Blessed art thou who seeks his forgiveness. I beg you, do not disturb the girl's meditations. Revere Mother, I do not know this person. I'm sorry, but I... I don't know what you're talking about. Please do not vex her. She needs quiet and solitude to calm her mind and heal her heart. Is it real? I don't understand. I remember, there was a sign. Lediana, we have discussed this sign of yours. The Maker does not care to interfere in the affairs of mortals. This vision was likely the work of demons. The Maker cares for us. I believe he misses his wayward children as much as we miss him. My vision may not be from him, but it guides me to do what is right. My revered mother knew this. 
I don't know who you are, but you are not her. Let us leave. My head has not yet cleared, but there is something familiar about you, and I believe I trust you. This is your home, your refuge. Do you truly wish to leave the comfort of this place behind? Stay and know peace. There is no need. I carry the peace of the Chantry in my heart. You are going nowhere, girl. I will not permit it. No, she is ours. Now and forever. Holy Mecha! She... she was a... Oh, my head feels heavy. Like I've just woken up from a terrible nightmare. I believe we had some task to accomplish. Let us be on our way. Wait, what's happening to me? I was just thinking about what happened to the elves, and I am reminded of a song sung to me many years ago. It was when my mother died, and this wise elven woman comforted me and told me that we shouldn't fear death or hate it. Death is just another beginning. One day, we must all shed our earthly bodies to allow our spirits to fly free. It's a beautiful sentiment, I think. One that brings peace and hope to the grieving. Why do you say the Maker speaks to you, when all know that the Maker has left? He spoke only to Andraste. Do you believe yourself her equal? I never said that. I... In Orle, you were someone. In Lothering, you feared you would lose yourself, become a drab sister, and disappear. When your brothers and sisters of the Cloister criticized you for what you professed, you were hurt, but you also reveled in it. It made you special. You enjoyed the attention, even if it was negative. You're saying that I made it up for... for the attention? I did not. I know what I believe. I have heard much about the halls of the Dwarven Kings, 
but the stories do it no justice. It is so strange, harsh, yet beautiful. And have you seen those tiny pig-like burrowing animals? They are adorable. I wish I could have one as a pet. But they must be hard to catch and... Oh, just ignore me. I'm so silly sometimes. Let's just go. Oh, it's one of those subterranean bunny pigs. Oh, look at him. Come here, you. Thank you so much. You've made my day. Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelton. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orlé ruled. When Orlé was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orlé. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orlé and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. Strangely, the only thing I really remember of Mother was her scent. She kept dried flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orle. But enough about that. Let us move on. Flowers? For me? <gasps> They're beautiful! These were her favorite. <sighs> I haven't seen these in such a long time. They smell just like mother used to. Thank you. Thank you so much for remembering. I enjoy the nights at camp. The night always seems more peaceful to me, safer. I feel the night grants us a reprieve from the troubles of the day. Silly, isn't it? The darks will never sleep, and they lurk in the shadows. I enjoy those nights when we stand guard together, talking to pass the time in those small hours. Well, I talk and you listen, mostly. Sometimes, I succumb and fall asleep and wake to find you still watchful. And I know you're watching out for me. What I'm trying to say is, is that I trust you. I'm comfortable around you. I know you'll be there when I need you. You are a, a leader. And my friend, and sometimes I think that m maybe we could be more than that. Maker, look at me stumbling over my words like an ill-educated peasant girl. Some bard I am. I'm not embarrassed. I'm just flushed because of the heat. What? Are you saying I have bad taste? Why can't I like you? You're a good person, a great listener, uh, a remarkable warrior. You often show signs of intelligence, and you're fairly good looking. Most of your facial features are in the right place. You're welcome, I try. There isn't much more I can say. My feelings have been laid bare. You are very special to me. Really? <laughs> No one told me. You... you felt the same way and didn't do me the courtesy of informing me? You made me say all those things! Why couldn't you have said them first? Oh... you... Oh, how very awkward! <clears throat> well, yes, but... but... D don't question me. I am a woman and I reserve the right to be inconsistent. <laughs> Why am I being such a baby about this? I must be a sight spilling my guts. Well, I, um, that settles it then. Stop. Don't kill him. He is no common bandit. None of them were. Their weapons and armor are of fine make, and they are well trained. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Who are you? 
someone who regrets taking you on. I was told it would be an easy job. Kill the little red-haired girl. Deal with the others as we pleased. Kill the... You came to kill me? <laughs> I don't pay to ask why someone wants someone else dead. I just need to know what to do and where to get my money. Ha! Money. I'll be lucky to get away with my life, it seems. <laughs> Maybe we could work something out. You like the idea? Speak quickly. I've no real quarrel with you. It wasn't me that wanted you dead. But I know how you can find the one who does. I have some directions written down on how to get to the house. It's in Denrim. Yeah, it's the best I can do. Thank you. Now leave. I never want to see you again. Don't worry. I'll not trouble you no more. It's Marjolaine. It has to be. Maybe someone saw me. Maybe she's finally found me and wants to finish what she started. She needs to answer for what she's done to me. If we are ever in Denrim, I would like to seek her out. Perhaps it's time to settle this score for good. Liliana! Ah, oh, so lovely to see you again, my dear. Spare me the pleasantries. I know you're... Oh, you must excuse the shabby accommodations. I try to be a good host, but you see what I have to work with. This country smells like wet dog everywhere. I cannot get this smell out. Even now it is in my hair, my clothes... Ugh. So business-like, your companion. You framed me, had me caught and tortured. I thought that in Ferelden I would be free of you, but it seems I am not. What happened to make you hate me so? Why do you want me dead so badly? Dead? Nonsense! I know you, my Liliana. I know what you are capable of. Four or five men you can dispatch easily. They were sent to give you cause to come to me. And see? Here you are. You are so transparent. What are you up to, Marjolaine? Why are you in Ferelden? In truth, you have knowledge that you can use against me. For my own safety, I cannot let you be. It is you think I did not know where you were? Did you think I would not watch, my Liliana? What is she up to, I thought? The quiet life, the peasant clothes, hair ragged and messy like a boy. Uh, this is not her. You were planning something, I told myself, so I watched. But no letters were sent, no messages, you barely spoke to anyone. Clever, Liliana, very clever. You almost had me fooled. But then, you left the Chantry so suddenly. What conclusion should I draw? You tell me. You think I left because of you? You think I still have some plan for... for revenge? You are insane. Paranoid. Oh, is that what you think? If I were you, I would believe nothing she says. Not a one. She will use you. You look at her and you see a simple girl, a friend, trusting and warm. It is an act. I am not you, Marjolaine. I left because I didn't want to become you. Oh, but you are me. You cannot escape it. No one will understand you the way I do, because we are one and the same. Do you know why you were a master manipulator, Liliana? It is because you enjoyed the game. You reveled in the power it gave you. You cannot change or deny this. You will not threaten me or my friends again, Marjolaine. I want you out of my life forever. You've caused too much pain for too many, Marjolaine. It ends here. And you think you can kill me like that? I made you, Liliana. I can destroy you just as easily. Oh, hello. Is there something you wanted to talk about? It's... it's nothing. I'm fine. I'm just thinking. 
I can't get what happened out of my head. I'd been in Lothering for years, and she still thought I was plotting against her. She didn't trust me. Maybe she never did. She loved me when she could use me and control me. And now that she can't, she wants me dead. It... It hurts to realize that I never really knew her. You are already helping so much by listening to me. I knew she was ruthless, but I didn't know how far she could go. She is self-serving, cruel. She uses people, then discards them. But that's how she survives in the life she leads. What? Well, what if she's right? What if we're the same? I... I should just have stayed in the Chantry. You don't understand. I forgot my life as a bard while I was in the cloister. I felt safe. I didn't have to watch my back all the time. That's what made Marjolaine the person she is, don't you see? It ruined her. It will ruin me too. It's already happened. When we killed her, I... I enjoyed it. Seeing her dead gave me satisfaction. But that is no reason to rejoice over her death. That is what she would do. I don't want that. What we're doing. What we've done. Hunted men down. Killed them. Part of me loves it. It invigorates me, and this scares me. I... I feel myself slipping. I admit that I took great pleasure in the intrigue back in Orlais. It was dangerous and chaotic and exciting. But it destroyed my life. I thought the Chantry showed me another path. I thought I was done with this life. Am I wrong? There is this thought that floats into my mind constantly. That I lie when I say the Chantry gave me peace, when in truth it... It bored me. Here, with you, knowing the freedom of the road and the uncertainty of tomorrow, I feel alive again. I would like to be alone for now. I have many things to consider. Thank you for listening to me. Do you remember our discussion? I just wanted to tell you that I thought about what you told me, and you were right. I didn't want to admit it, even to myself, but those years in Lothering, I yearned for the freedom and the recklessness that I knew in Orlais. The Maker made the world beautiful, but he also made it dangerous. To really experience it, I have to embrace this, not not hide away in some nunnery. Sometimes, it takes another to show us the truths we hide from ourselves. I'm glad I left Lothering in your company. You have proven a true friend and I thank the Maker for you. Of course. Yes, a little better. Time heals all wounds, so they say. Scars remain, but they are just... Colors in the painting that is my life, no? Yes, that is what I'm saying. I wish things had happened differently, but knowing her and knowing me, I don't think it could have. We had good times, though, and I look back on those fondly. Whatever happened after will never change the truth of the past. Yes, once, a long time ago. She was a worldly woman, and there was so much she knew and was willing to share with me. I would have done anything for her once. She used to be different. Happier, I think. She loved music, and had a weakness for sugary cakes. Maybe she was always lying about who she was. Or maybe she changed over the years. I... I'm fine. And we're friends, aren't we? We can talk about these things if you want. The Marjolaine I knew is gone. I just have to move on. And I... I think I have. You are how she used to be years ago. A joy to be around, a constant companion and a listening ear in times of need. My dearest one, I think that day has already come and gone. I have never regretted leaving Orlais. I do not regret any of the pain, the anger, the loneliness. Because it brought me to you, and I love you. It's so wonderful to say that to someone again.
<laughs> but people are starting to look at me strangely. We will speak of this again, I promise. It has been some time since I left Lothering. When I stepped out of the cloister, I had no idea where my path would lead. I walked where the Maker led me, and he has rewarded me for my faith. I found you. <laughs> yes, talk of the Maker is hardly romantic, is it? But now it's getting late. I think I might turn in early. I can't help thinking about how soft and warm my bedroll is. <laughs> of course I do. You know I enjoy your company. But it's getting a little chilly, and I'd prefer to be in my bedroll. You know, it would be nice if you came with me. So I can show you my collection of pressed flowers. Obviously. I... Don't. Stop pretending you don't know what I want. Ah, oh, the games you play. Listen, I want to spend the night with you. There, I said it. Oh, now she gets it. Oh, don't second guess me. It's not becoming. Come here. And no arguing this time. I've been up for some time, but yes, I slept very well. I've just been watching you sleep. Did you know your eyelids flutter when you dream? And you have such pretty eyelashes. Mm-hmm. They're like little butterflies. I want to catch them and keep them in a jar. Crazy now? Liar. You thought I was crazy the first time you met me. <laughs> I'm so happy, blissful. I haven't slept so well since I was forced to flee from Orlais. Knowing you will be the first thing I see when I wake gives me no small amount of comfort. I feel safe in your arms. Safe, loved and accepted. This is where I belong. Thank you. I suppose I should get up. We have a long day ahead of us. Come on. Darkspawn await with bated breath for you to put them out of their misery. What are you... Oh, I see. Hmm. I suppose the darkspawn will just have to wait a bit longer. <laughs> An unusual request, coming from a fearsome slayer of darkspawn. I am flattered that you wish to learn from me, sweet thing. But I have watched you, and you seem to lack a particular grace that is required. You are accustomed to doing battle a certain way, yes? I can teach you some basics. Perhaps you can pass it on to someone who might be interested in what I have to offer. I do, however, wish to get to know my potential student better. So we shall call for a drink, and you will honor me with a game. Do you have something else in mind? Oh, and now you've piqued my interest. It would surely be rude of me to decline such a delicious offer. You're going with her? I... I thought you were joking. I can't let you do this. Not without me. Um, keeping an eye on the both of you? Who am I to deny such a pretty little thing as yourself, my dear? You are welcome to join us. Come. My ship is down by the docks, and I am sure you will find my cabins quite comfortable. She's quite feisty, isn't she? And you said she was a cloistered sister? I dare say the cloisters must be teaching things other than the chant of light. Oh, no, no. I learned those things in Orlais. Bored noble women often come up with various methods of self-amusement. I see. <laughs> uh, perhaps we could talk more about this later, Leliana.
This is a nice change from having to sleep in the woods, isn't it? Well, aren't you sweet and attentive? Of course. Hmm... I have not given this a lot of thought. What will I do? We've traveled far and wide. Does it need to end? I would hate to be apart from you. You are the first thing I see in the morning, the last I see at night. I don't want that to change. Ooh, how dramatic. I'm going to hold you to your word. I mean it. So this is it? This is the end? We've come so far. It's strange knowing that all our fates will be decided in a matter of hours. We stand on the precipice before the greatest battle of our age. I wonder if the heroes of old ever felt like this. I am not afraid. We go to fight for a good cause, and there is nowhere else I would rather be. You are my dearest friend and my love. You lit my path through darkness, and I will stand with you to whatever end. This day, we will forge a legend of our own. Of course. Wait, you want to talk uh, about us? Is there something bothering you? Really? You think so? You're so sweet. So here we are. The conquering heroine has won the day, and now she takes her bow and exits the stage. A fine ending. <laughs> yes. Yes, she most certainly does. You know, I can't help now but think of my vision. Whether it was the Maker sending me to you or whatever, it was a good thing. I thought I was supposed to save you, to show you the way. But it seems it was meant to be the other way around. Odd how that works, no? Flatterer. So, if I heard right, you'll be leaving soon. Any room for an extra body on your travels? Good. I imagine that whatever you get up to will be anything but boring. At any rate, I should let you get back to your celebration before someone drags you away. I look forward to seeing you again afterwards. <laughs>